In this G82 series form, the BMW M4 competition is probably the last combustion engine BMW M model of its kind, so it better be good. This second generation M4, now offered in both coupe and convertible forms, is quicker, cleverer and meaner looking than its predecessor, plus it ushers in a fresh era of drive assist and safety tech. Most importantly, perhaps, you get the option of all-wheel drive for the first time. It's actually mandatory on the fabric drop-top variant. Plus, in all its forms, this car keeps to an enhanced version of the classic straight-six engine configuration. One thing's guaranteed, a proper driving experience. Supercar style performance comes in many shapes and forms and some of them might not even require a lottery win for ownership. Take this car, the second generation G82 series version of BMW's M4 Competition Coupe. It has a serious need for speed. And it's delivered from a rich heritage of competition, tyre smoke and unremitting motorsport development over four decades. Back in 1986, BMW's motorsport division lent its expertise to the development of a lightweight Supersports three-door model designed around the Group A homologation regulations of the time. The result was a car the brand badged the M3, which established quite a reputation across three following generations. Uh, the models subsequently available in both coupe and saloon forms. In 2014, with the launch of the fifth generation design, the Munich maker separated off the coupe version from its saloon stablemate by giving it M4 badging. And that F82 series model sold until 2020 when this G82 design took over. As before, body style apart, this car remains largely identical to its M3 competition stablemate. And as with that car, quite a lot's changed with the creation of what will almost certainly be the last combustion engined BMW M model of this kind. Compared to its predecessor, this M4 is now 122 millimeters longer, 60 horsepower more powerful, and perhaps most significantly, most versions of it will be sold with four wheel drive. That last evolutionary element is perhaps the most significant, but it had to come. The output of this car has spiralled to over 500 horsepower, 510 to be exact, which is what you get from this competition spec variant, the only version of this G82 Series M4, which is going to be imported into the UK. That's an awful lot to be putting through the rear wheels on a typical damp British B road, which is why 80% of M4 sales going forward will be of models with the X-Drive system. And that's the format you have to have if you choose the alternative convertible version of this model. In short, this isn't the car the purists were expecting, but it's the kind of M4 that BMW is convinced the market wants. Are they right? The industry's most comprehensive road test film, Car and Driving's Review, will give you the answers. It's quite hard to know what to expect on first acquaintance with this car. There's a great straight six engine under the bonnet here, but it was originally launched in a BMW SUV. Uh, there's a smartly menacing look, but it clothes uh, strength and structure, which has added a huge 170 kilos to the curb weight. There's a multi-configurable M Steptronic Sport Auto Transmission, but instead of the rifle crack swiftness of the old MDCT dual clutch box, gears are now changed using a more conventional torque converter ZF8 speeder. And this time around, for our market anyway, there's no longer a manual gearbox option. So are we really in for a memorable M experience here? And you continue to wonder that after taking a seat behind the wheel, where it's all a very long way from classic cars in this model line in terms of the complexity of the dash displays and the menu options that you're faced with. But the satisfying twin tailpipe burble you get after jabbing this red starter button on the transmission tunnel will be familiar if you've long dreamed of a BMW M car. And so will the urgent forward thrust, which accompanies a flex of your right foot. 
there's an instancy of response that very few turbocharged engines can deliver and that speaks of the very careful changes which have evolved this 510 horsepower S58 unit from its 450 HP B58 predecessor, an engine which did occasionally exhibit a bit of lag. Uh, to eradicate that there's a new forged crankshaft, a 3D printed cylinder head and 350 bar direct injection, all of which combines to uh, lift torque by a substantial 100 Newton meters over the previous unit. Uh, there's now 650 Newton meters of it, which as a result means that in almost any gear you just plant your foot down and it goes all the way to the 7200 RPM red line very, very fast especially from rest, where with the assistance of launch control, 62 is crested in only 3.9 seconds, with 124 miles an hour flashing by in 12.5 seconds, on the way to a top speed of 155 or 180, if the optional M Pro package is specified. All that's with the rear-driven version of this model that we're trying here, and it's a couple of tenths quicker to 62 than its direct F82 predecessor, but it sounds just as good, especially if you've engaged the active sports exhaust uh, which has a deep guttural roar and it's authentically embellished through the stereo speakers. You'll have to make the changes yourself when you're using launch control but that's no issue because the freshly installed torque converter M Steptronic Sport Drive Logic gearbox with its tactile carbon fibre trim paddle shifters proves to be uh, virtually as quick at powering through the ratios as its dual clutch DCT predecessor and as with that old box there is also the option to vary the ferocity of the shift speed using this drive logic button at the base of the gear stick here uh, via which you'll be able to access three distinct setups uh, there's comfort orientated there's sports focused or track optimized transmission change is one of the things that you can customize by the center console uh, setup button or the center stack displays selectable M menu. Either way you get a center stack screen that allows you to tailor your preferred drive settings and to store your two most favored combinations behind these uh, little red M1 and M2 tabs on the steering wheel. Uh, one perhaps for commuting, uh, the other may be for your favorite back road. Uh, as well as fiddling with the gear shift timings, you can also alter the parameters for engine and for steering, plus there are also three chassis options for the suppleness of the adaptive M suspension with its electronically controlled damping. And there are two pedal feel settings for the freshly developed M compound brakes with M carbon ceramic stoppers as before remaining optional for those with absolutely bottomless bank accounts. Uh, braver folk can use the M menu to deactivate the DSC traction system and dial in a lesser level of stability intervention via a provided 10 stage slider tool. In addition to all that, you'll want to play with the center console M mode button, which offers road, sport and track settings, each of which uh, changes the instrument display here and the level of drive assistance system intervention. So this M4 is quick and there are lots of selectable modes that allow you to set it up much as a professional driver would set up his race car. You probably expected that. What's different here though is the way that you can use all that speed and motorsport tamed tech. Even on dry tarmac, the previous version of this model needed care when you were pushing on hard over a favourite bumpy secondary road, uh, not only if you were going to avoid a trip to the magistrate's court, but also if you were going to avoid a trip through the nearest hedge. Uh, this Mark II version uh, it still feels pretty firm, especially at lower speeds, and it still requires a keen sense of uh, responsibility if you're to exercise it fully, but it's a big step forward in terms of its composure over under or mid-corner tarmac tears. Perhaps that has something to do with the extra curb weight we mentioned earlier on. Uh, not that you necessarily really feel that though. Uh, aided by its stiffer body shell and the M Sport differential, this G82 series car almost but not quite delivers an M2 level of agility that you'd struggle to believe until you experience it. Nevertheless, a 1.8 ton M4 really does seem a long way from the stripped out lightweight ethos which once was supposed to characterize this model line, uh, the kind of thing that the purists still reminisce about. BMW though doesn't build cars of this kind for the purists anymore, which is just as well because if they did, this car wouldn't have the twin turbo engine which makes possible that prodigious output, or the proper modern electric steering rack 
which makes possible all the electronic safety features which allow you to use all that power in reasonable safety. Instead, with each new model in the line, the brand has always chosen uh, to prioritise what it thinks its increasingly well-heeled customers uh, are looking for at that particular moment in time, uh, which in this case explains why our market isn't getting the manual gearbox and the non-competition spec 473 HP versions of this car that you can buy in mainland Europe. It also explains why there'll be a convertible M4 this time around and M competition variants of the company's X3 and X4 SUVs, which were the first to get this car's ballistic 510 horsepower straight six powertrain. Uh, those crossovers, of course, uh, paired it with X drive four wheel drive. Yes, now, four-wheel drive, uh, that's another thing that the purists will disapprove of as part of the evolution, which has brought us this G82 design. Uh, you don't have to have it. As we said earlier, we've stuck here with the rear-driven model, but going forward, eight out of 10 M4s will be sold in X-Drive form. And we can understand why opting for this extra cost tractional package makes this G82 series car an M4 that you could drive hard year round on UK roads. Yet you can still also configure this BMW for those occasions when you want a more rear driven feel. Uh, the X-Drive system distributes power between the front and rear wheels via a transfer case uh, with an electronically controlled multi-plate clutch before a clever active M differential splits it again between the two rear wheels. Uh, the extra traction, it uh, significantly enhances acceleration from standstill and it reduces the 62 miles an hour sprint time to uh, 3.5 seconds. And the driver can configure the distribution of power as required via a provided setup menu. This has a default four-wheel drive setting for unshakable traction and precisely controllable handling, or a four-wheel drive sport mode, which uh, directs a greater proportion of the engine's torque to the rear wheels to optimize track performance. Switching off the DSC stability system brings a further two-wheel drive mode into the equation with no intervention from the control system. All of which means that with an X-Drive equipped M4, just as with this more traditional rear-driven model, tail-out tyre-smoking slides on track days remain a tantalising possibility for expert drivers. These are people who love the M-Drive professional package built into this G82 series model. A key element of this is the uh, BMW M Drift Analyzer, which at speed around a circuit records the amount of oversteer and opposite lock the driver's been able to engage. And if all you want to do is burn away this car's expensive Michelin Pilot Sport 4S rubber with tire smoking drifts, it'll record your next and best drifts in terms of seconds, yards and angle. You can even manage these without necessarily turning off the DSC stability intervention if you tap the center console button and engage M dynamic mode, which allows for a greater degree of wheel slip. Uh, the M Drive Professional Package also includes an M lap timer. Uh, data from that can be analyzed in detail via the M lap timer app, which uh, Apple phone users can download. Uh, for this second generation M4, BMW has also redesigned the cooling and the oil supply systems, especially for track use. Whether all of this is enough to create in this G82 series model the ideal car for track heroes is of course another question. Probably not, uh, the bulkier curb weight might tell against this BMW in extremis, but what's not in doubt is it's a far better road ready tool than its predecessor and any previous M3 come to that. Uh, the things that were pretty good about this car, its low center of gravity, uh, the perfect 50-50 weight distribution, they're now enhanced by a longer wheelbase, a wider track, a stiffer body shell, a more engaging engine and a whole stack of extra technology, all of which has made this more capable M4 uh, more involving yet at the same time also somehow less intimidating. It's quite an achievement and it is quite a car. Whatever you think about its divisive new look, there's no doubt that this G82 series M4 has the degree of overtaking presence that its F82 series predecessor somehow lacked, especially if you order it in a brighter shade like this vibrant Sao Paulo yellow. And when you're spending this kind of money on a sports coupe of this caliber, that kind of statement really matters. 
As with that previous model, this car shares just about everything with its M3 competition showroom stablemate. It's even the same length as that saloon with the same 2,857 mil wheelbase. Although it's 16 millimeters narrower, it sits 40 mils lower and in this coupe form, it's a nominal five kilos lighter. There is a convertible M4 variant as an alternative to this fixed top version, but with that, you'd have to do without one of this car's signature styling features. It's classy carbon fiber reinforced plastic roof with its two lengthwise rails that optimize airflow. Other distinctive design touches are plentiful. These traditional M gills in the side panels, for example, and these M specific door mirrors with their aerodynamically optimized contouring. Now these are offered either in high gloss black or as in this case in carbon fiber. Uh, one of the most uh, striking profile features though is this extended lower side sill, which uh, together with the attachment parts for the front and the rear aprons forms a high gloss black band around the whole of the car. Uh, you'll also note the uh, prominently flared wheel arches. Now these have uh, incorporated air curtain inner lining slits at the front and these tiny aerodynamic spats at the rear. These arches house 19 inch rims at the front and 20 inches at the rear. We have the optional 826 series M double bicolor black alloy rims with track tires here, which can be had with blue or black M brake calipers if you don't like the standard red ones. At the front, the contoured bonnet has indentations flanking its central crease, and that flows down into that controversial vertical upright kidney grille, either side of which lie additional cooling intakes, which is here, can also be trimmed in carbon fiber. Further up, smeared into the corners of the car, a shadow line LED headlights with darkened inlays uh, adorning their upper edges. Here, the blue beam highlights signal that they've been embellished with uh, piercing BMW laser light technology. From the side, if you're still not quite familiar with the current generation 4 Series Coupe on which this uh, M4 is based, then we'll note the changes made as part of that car's evolution. Uh, no horizontal shaven line and no uh, classic Hofmeister kink in the rear C-pillar, which is strange since BMW's design team claims to have borrowed styling cues from the brand's classic E9 era 3-litre CSI Coupe penned by Wilhelm Hofmeister, all of which creates a shape that's 122 millimetres longer than the previous F82 Series M4, a silhouette with short overhangs, slender pillars and flanks shaped by precisely carved surfaces with a slim window graphic and a stretched roof line flowing smoothly into the tail. At the rear, darkened full LED light clusters with L-shaped tail lamps emphasize the 17 millimeter width increase over the previous model and sit below a neat rear spoiler with a distinctive central notch. Again, if you want something more distinctive than the high gloss black standard finishing, there's the option of carbon fiber trim for this and also for that potent looking lower diffuser which features eye-catching fins which frame the exhaust system's pairs of tailpipes each measuring 100 millimeters in diameter. What's more significant, of course, is what you can't see, primarily an awful lot of extra bracing on top of the part steel, part aluminum CLAR platform. Some of it around the engine and much more in the center and the rear of the floor. There's also a new aluminum front subframe, while the rear subframe is now more rigidly mounted to the chassis. Right, let's take a seat inside. Now, what you don't want here is the feeling that you've just bought an M Sport trimmed four series model with ideas above its station. And that's not what you get. Although a bit disappointingly, this M4 does without the motorized belt buckler, which on an ordinary four series coupe, uh, hands you your belt buckle when you get in. Perhaps though, that doesn't go with the whole bespoke motorsport theme going on here. That's characterized particularly by these optional race style M carbon bucket seats, which certainly supply the uh, DTM ambiance that some customers might want. Others will find them a touch pretentious, a bit like some of the wilder color schemes and spec options that your dealer will want to brief you on. Now, the more somber tones that feature here fit better with this G82 series model's classier cabin architecture. It's sensible, high quality, uh, ergonomic, and based around the twin screens of BMW's familiar live cockpit professional setup.
There's a thick M leather steering wheel, of course, complete with red accented M buttons for your favorite drive settings and an embossed M-stitched drive selector along with interior trim strips in high gloss carbon fiber and an anthracite colored headliner. The required sense of technology and luxury that's provided by configurable LED interior lighting, a 16 speaker Harman Kardon Hi-Fi and a head-up display, all of which delivers a required sense of occasion and it's all just as good as anything you'll find in an M5 or an M8. We mentioned screens earlier, the first of them is this 12.3 inch instrument display which inevitably but rather disappointingly replaces the previous model's motorsport derived dials. There's a choice of three display formats, road, sport and track and the easiest way to flip between them is to press this M mode button on the centre console. Road is the usual BMW setup with its opposite swinging needles. In this format, there's sat-nav mapping in the center of the display, but you can't expand the 3D navigation layout to completely fill the screen as you can with, say, the virtual cockpit layout of a rival Audi RS5. Switch to the second sports screen format and you get instead a central, more focused display that sees your chosen gear ratio and speed flanked by vertical rev counter readouts Plus, you can customize what appears to the left of the graphic. There are tire, engine data, G meter, and speed stat options. Uh, the final layout option, track, keeps much the same format, but shows you the car's current M dynamic drive settings to the right of the display and turns off the center stack infotainment screen to avoid distraction. Anything else you need is likely to be located on this 10.25 inch center control display, which can do just about anything from changing engine settings to booking airline tickets and hotel rooms. Uh, the main area you're gonna to want to focus on is the selectable M menu, uh, which is where you're going to be configuring the drive settings for these little red M1 and M2 paddles on the steering wheel spokes. Uh, there are engine, transmission, chassis, steering, brake, and DSC stability sections, plus a slider to vary the amount of M traction control intrusion, along with engine start-stop and sound control options. The M menu also allows you to configure the head-up display and the instrument cluster, plus it's your access point for the M drift analyzer, which you can use on track days to show your next drift and best drift achievements in terms of seconds, yards, and angle. Track heroes are gonna love all of it. Otherwise, it's all pretty much as you'd expect in any other modern BMW model these days. Uh, this advanced infotainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant. Uh, this is a supposed fount of all knowledge which responds to voiced questions that are prefaced by Hey BMW, much as would the Alexa system or Siri on an Apple phone or the Google Assistant feature on an Android handset. BMW insists that this setup is rather cleverer than those. Uh, you can give it a name if you think it'll help you to bond with it. And the press kit tells us we can even ask it the meaning of life. It's more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just a bit easier. If you take it cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, then it'll trot out explanatory text from the online handbook or you might want it to check your oil level, uh, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages. This lower iDrive controller still sets the class standard for infotainment functionality. Uh, for example, it just takes a couple of nudges to set up just how much steering intervention you want out of the safety systems, or whether you want that at all. And the system will then remember your preferences. If you're graduating on from the previous F82 generation M4, uh, then you'll be pleased to find uh, both the top of this capstan controller here and the screen surface are now touch sensitive as standard. Plus, in an age where many rivals are dispensing with audio volume control knobs, we were very pleased to find one that's been retained here. Uh, you'll quickly get to grips with the calm, measured graphics of this operating system 7.0 Monitor 2. The layout's clear and logical. It gives you a sidebar menu, uh, which offer media, communication, navigation, car and apps options. And they're also duplicated by buttons next to the iDrive controller. Uh, these shortcut options connect you into features like the DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity and connected sat-nav, all of its standard fare. Uh, there's no respite inside here though from the divisive look of the front grille. If you don't happen to like that, a striking image of that appendage appears on the central screen when you alter the various individual drivetrain settings. 
There's an awful lot of connected drive digital stuff on this central screen too. A wide range of BMW vehicle apps, for example, that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. And a concierge service, which connects you through to an operator to help with journeying information. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software. And there's also what BMW calls an open mobility cloud, which, via a clever My BMW app, can allow you to interact with the car when you're not in it. For example, it allows you to remotely view it in 3D. There are caveats here, though. Uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring is now standard without limit and not before time. But many of this Munich maker's digital services remain life-limited uh, before becoming chargeable, some for three years, and others like BMW Music, which brings your favourite soundtracks into your car, and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. Uh, to some extent, you can't help feeling it's a case of the brand giving with one hand and taking away with the other. Buried away in this central screen are lots of extra little touches you'll like. For example, the caring car feature uses music, lighting and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalise or relax you. We also like the way that you can adjust the climate system's flow and temperature for different seats, for the driver, the front passenger and for the second row. And with the seat heating, you can adjust the amount of heat distributed to the seat back and the seat base. And there's a climate control rules section which allows you to set up the system so that heating for the seats and the steering wheel automatically comes on when the outside temperature drops below a certain level. What else do we need to tell you away from screens? Uh, well, build quality, predictably faultless. Uh, interesting, this M4 isn't screwed together alongside its M3 showroom stablemate at BMW's factory in Munich. Instead, it rolls down the production lines of the brand's plant in Dingolfing. As with an M3, you'll need to acquaint yourself with quite a lot of button functionality. Unlike most of its rivals, BMW still believes in buttons. We like that, but we can't say the same for these optional carbon shell race seats. For a start, you might find the exaggerated bolsters a bit tight for comfort if you happen to be regularly familiar with the offerings of uh, Colonel Sanders, that is. And whatever your size, getting in and out with these seats fitted is irritatingly awkward. Plus, this ridge between your legs just feels odd. Uh, for the occasional day at Spa, Franc or Champ, these chairs will be brilliant. For the rest of your ownership life, though, you'll wonder why on earth you shelled out more for them. Otherwise, everything's exactly as it would be on a well-specified 4-series coupe. Maybe perhaps the M440i variant, in which you could have gone almost as fast for an awful lot less. As usual with the coupe, over-the-shoulder view is slightly restricted thanks to the chunky rear pillars and the boot lid with a leading edge, which is difficult to see. Although that issue is uh, somewhat mitigated by a whole bank of technology, which will help you to slot into spaces. All-round parking sensors, a rear-view camera and a parking assistant to steer you into tight bays are all standard. As is a reversing assistant, uh, which automatically reverses you along whatever path uh, you'd previously taken forward. Uh, you can even add the optional drive recorder package that we have here, and that uses the various driver assistance cameras around the car to record and store video footage from different points around the vehicle. So if you ever should have an impact, you'll be able to instantly watch that back and inwardly cringe. There's a reasonable level of cabin practicality. The door bins incorporate bottle holders and they're averagely sized. The glove box is mostly taken up by the owner's manual. Seems a bit pointless actually, given that the entire manual is accessible via the infotainment screen. This lidded area at the base of the center stack reveals a couple of cup holders along with a 12 volt port and a USB-A point. Plus there's a wireless phone charging mat. A USB-C point can be found in this lidded box between the seats. An overhead sunglasses compartment, well, that's missing, uh, but you do get a flock line cubby down by the driver's right knee and ticker clips on the sun visors. With the optional carbon bucket chairs, uh, we never really worked out what this little carbon fibre tray in the central seat ridge is for. Uh, it's ideal, perhaps, for your barbecue dip from the drive through <laughs> Getting into the back isn't the easiest task in the world, but it is aided by these uh, electrically operable front seats, which slide obediently forward when you pull on this M Sport coloured seat shoulder tab, allowing just enough space to access the rear in reasonable comfort. 
Once you're inside, you'll find a slightly strange combination of surprisingly decent legroom, but slightly compromised headroom. It's a bit weird sitting behind these carbon shell race seats with their exaggerated cutouts. And lankier folk will notice that to achieve this Mark II model's slinky looks, BMW's lowered the roof line by quite a bit. If you're over six foot, you'll certainly find yourself grazing your scalp on the headlining. Still, assuming they're not sat behind a couple of basketball players, most adults will be fine back here on all but the longest trips, aided by the 41mm increase in wheelbase enjoyed by this G82-era design. Obviously, if you were to need these rear seats for adults on a regular basis, you wouldn't choose this Coupe M4 variant, but you would opt instead for the more practical G80 design four-door M3 version of this competition model. In this Coupe, there isn't much storage space here in the back. There are no central cup holders, and you don't get door pockets either, just a bottle holder and a narrow little ledge on either side of the cabin. Occupants are favoured with climate controls and individual vents though with uh, twin USB-C ports just below. Plus there are coat hooks on the B-pillars and these side windows let in a decent amount of light to prevent this area feeling too claustrophobic. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Uh, this powered trunk lid comes as part of the extra cost comfort package. And once open, it reveals a large but shallow space rated at 440 litres. That's 40 litres less than you'll get in the M3 saloon. Uh, you get a lot less room in the alternative M4 convertible, of course. 385 litres with the roof up and just 300 when it's down. In this coupe model, the boot area is usefully square and large, although it can't offer you any further space beneath the floor. Uh, there are stowage compartments on the left and on the right, and they have netting that can be slid down if you want to use the additional space in those recessed areas to allow something quite long to be accommodated width-wise across the floor area, uh, a bag of golf clubs, for example. Uh, you have to lump your items over quite a high lip, though, to access the space provided here. If you need more room, a flexible 40-20-40 split folding rear backrest is provided as standard, accessed via these rather hidden catches in the roof of the trunk area. Although the backrests don't fold completely flat, this does allow longer items like skis to be slid forward into the cabin without disturbing two rear seated folk. From launch, BMW attached a price tag of just over £76,000 to this G82 Series M4 competition model in rear-driven form. That's £1,300 more than this model's M3 competition saloon counterpart. The X-Drive four-wheel drive M4 competition model, which over 80% of customers are expected to choose, costs around £2,300 more, so just under £78,500 at the time of this test. If you opt for the M4 competition convertible, you have to have the X-Drive system as part of a package priced at launch from around £82,000. What you can't have is the non-competition spec version of this M4, which is available in other markets. It has 473 horsepower and it can be ordered with the manual gearbox, which uh, BMW declines to offer in the UK. So it's high spec and auto transmission only for this G82 series model, which means given the prices we've quoted, once you add in a few options, you could easily find yourself paying 85 to 90,000 pounds, even for a fixed top version of this car, which might make you reminisce for the days when an M3 coupe cost under 40,000. But perhaps a reality check is in order here. That was a very long time ago indeed. Even if you go two generations back to the E46 V8 M3 of 2007, you'll find that BMW was asking over £50,000 for that at launch, which is well over £70,000 in today's money. So costs have more or less been kept in line with disposable income and a significantly more powerful and impressive product has been delivered into the bargain. Well, that's BMW's perspective anyway. You could argue the point, but what's not up for debate is that the Munich maker is only asking what a model of this kind now tends to cost. Now, the car that throughout this G82 series model's lifetime will be its most direct competitor, the coupe version of the Mercedes-AMG C63 in its third generation form, hadn't been launched at the time of this test in summer 2021, but it will certainly be similarly priced and very different using a four-cylinder hybrid engine mating 449 VHP 
combustion power with a 204 HP electric motor and four wheel drive, which gives you some idea of how contenders in this segment are gonna look over the next few years. Like BMW, rival Audi still hasn't gone on board with that kind of change. Their competing RS5 coupe model is still very much old school in its engineering format with a throaty 444 HP V6, quattro four-wheel drive and a price tag which was just over £72,000 at the time of this test. The other very traditionally formatted model that potential M4 competition customers will probably have on their radars is Porsche's classic 911 Carrera. That car, which at the time of this test cost around £85,000 in coupe form, has only 380 horsepower, but it's not a lot slower than this BMW. It makes 62 from rest in 4.2 seconds on the way to 182 miles an hour. An arguably more direct rival from Porsche to this M4 is found in the Zuffenhausen brand's 718 Cayman GT4 model, which offers 420 PS, gets to 62 in 4.4 seconds, and at the time of this test, cost around £76,500. But you couldn't really commute in a Cayman GT4 in the way that you could in this BMW. A standard 718 Cayman GTS 4-litre model costing around £10,000 less will be better for that. But with any Porsche model, you'd miss the rear seat space and the boot capacity that this BMW does give you. Mind you, if you needed that, you'd be more likely to choose the M3 competition saloon version of this model, uh, the closest competitor to which, apart from the saloon version of the Mercedes-AMG C63, of course, is Alfa Romeo's Giulia Quadrifoglio saloon, which uses a 2.9-litre bi-turbo V6, developing the same 510 HP output of this M4, and which came with a £67,000 price tag at the time of this test. You might also look at the Maserati Ghibli V6 Modena S saloon. That has only 430 horsepower. It can only be had in rear-driven form and it costs around £83,500 at the time of this test. Before getting on to spec and equipment with this M4 competition model, uh, we need to give you a BMW perspective on its asking price figures and remind you that the next model up in BMW's full M hierarchy, the M5 competition, now costs a fraction over £100,000. Yes, really. Uh, you can expect the next generation M2 competition coupe, which at the time of this test was still pounding BMW test tracks prior to launch, uh, to cost significantly over £50,000. So in short, M performance doesn't come cheap, even if it lacks a combustion engine. The brand's i4 M50 GT style EV saloon, which is even quicker off the line than an M4, costs around £64,000. If having considered all the various options, you conclude it is an M4 competition model that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand's been with the standard spec to try to sugar the pill of that premium price tag. Well, there's lots of drive technology, of course, including an M Sport differential and a potent sounding dual branch sport exhaust system. Uh, using a selectable M menu can alter parameters for engine, the M Steptronic Sport auto transmission and the steering. Plus there are three chassis options for the suppleness of the adaptive M suspension with its electronically controlled damping and two pedal feel settings for the freshly developed M compound brakes. All settings can be stored behind little red M1 and M2 tabs on the steering wheel. Braver folk can use the M menu to deactivate the DSC traction system and dial in a lesser level of stability intervention via a provided 10-stage slider tool. Plus, as well as all that, there's additionally a center console M mode button which offers road, sport and track settings, each of which uh, change the instrument display and the level of drive assistance system intervention. And BMW also includes its M Drive Professional Package developed for track driving, which includes an M Drift Analyzer and an M Lap Timer. 
So that's covered drive stuff. What about pavement presence? Well, as you'd want, the exterior gets a very distinct and bespoke look. Uh, you'll immediately notice the carbon style roof. It's actually made of CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced plastic. And the M double spoke bicolor black alloy wheels also make a statement. Uh, they're 19 inches at the front and 20 inches at the back. You also get extended high gloss shadow line exterior trim, aluminium door sills with M4 branding, a black high gloss M rear lip spoiler and black chrome exhaust tailpipe finishers. You also get LED headlights with a high beam assistant, LED rear tail lamps and sun protection glass. For the cabin, there are M Sport seats upholstered in black marina leather with illuminated M4 branding. In the M4 convertible, they also get warm air collars which blow hot air on your neck for roof down driving on colder days. As you expect, there's a thick M Sport leather steering wheel plus a gear shift lever with an embossed M badge, a carbon fibre interior trim and an anthracite headliner and a bespoke version of BMW's head-up display, which is M-specific, just like the brand's sophisticated BMW Live Cockpit Professional arrangement. That gives you a large 10.25-inch center dash screen and a further, even bigger, 12.3-inch control display to replace the conventional dials in the instrument cluster. Plus, of course, as you'd expect for the money being asked here, you get a full suite of luxury segment features, acoustic side glass, ambient lighting, through loading folding rear seat backs, and three zone climate control. There's loads of help for slotting this car into tight bays too. Uh, not only all round sensors and a reversing camera, but also a parking assistant, which automatically steers you into spaces, and a reversing assistant, which when you return after parking up, can automatically reverse you along whatever a path you previously taken forward. In addition, pretty much all the stuff you'd expect from a premium executive model is present and correct too. So you can tick off auto headlamps and wipers, power folding heated mirrors, an alarm and LED illumination for the tail lamps and the front fog lights, along with cruise control, an anti-dazzle rear view mirror, and the usual BMW driving experience driving mode setup embellished with the track focused Sport Plus setting. BMW has additionally standardized its lovely welcome light carpet, which illuminates the ground around the front doors when you get into the car or step out of it at night. Annoyingly though, a space saver spare wheel isn't available and run flat tires can't be had either. We mentioned the BMW Live Cockpit Professional Arrangement earlier on. Well, that's your portal here for access to a portfolio of connectivity features on a completely different level to anything an M4 driver will have seen in the past. Uh, for a start, you get what BMW calls an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant features that you might use on your smartphone and is there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. Plus, of course, there's 3D navigation, Bluetooth and a high quality DAB audio setup. That's part of a 16 speaker Harman Kardon hi-fi system. In addition, there's also 4G LTE connectivity, a Wi-Fi hotspot, wireless charging and gesture control. Plus you can now at last with this car, get the brand's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone integration as standard without time limit. So you can easily use your favorite apps in the car. It's also worth knowing that the whole operating system 7.0 media setup can update itself over the air with remote upgrades, meaning you'll get into your M4 one day and find it's able to do something it couldn't do the day before, which is pretty cool. As brand loyalists would expect, this second generation M4 includes plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, and that includes the full suite of BMW connected package professional services. Uh, things like real-time traffic information, now that warns you about congestion along your chosen route, and connected parking. Now this offers multi-storey and on-street parking information in selected cities in the UK and Europe. Uh, there's also BMW's concierge service, which at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator and that person will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive it. Uh, and the connected package professional pack uh, now also includes connected music. That offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs into the vehicle from Spotify. Uh, In-car experiences, now these are one-shot cabin modes which are able to instantly adapt the interior ambiance to suit your mood. 
Plus there's the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps too, and they give you access to things like uh, news reports, uh, weather forecasts for up to four days ahead, and also information on highway tolls. In addition, uh, the system can remotely update itself with uh, fresh features and mapping upgrades too. And of course, it will read out your text messages to you. We'll also mention teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it for you. And as a customer of this Munich maker, you'll get a three month trial of a connected teaser package. Uh, now that gives you BMW music and that allows you to export your favorite soundtracks into the car. Uh, if you've owned a BMW before, then you might be familiar with the standard remote services package. Now this allows you to control uh, many aspects of the vehicle's operation via your smartphone. And uh, you will also maybe uh, recognize the downloadable My BMW app. Now this can learn your mobility routines, it can read your calendar and even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. Uh, it'll get familiar with all your most frequently traveled routes and it'll also memorize those as future destinations. Plus the app will help you to find the car if you've forgotten where you parked it and it can remotely lock or unlock the doors. That's enough on standard equipment. What about options? Most M4 customers spend plenty on extras and the spec of this test car certainly reflects that. It features the M Carbon Pack, which from launch cost a cool £6,750 and includes two main elements, both of which can also be ordered individually. Uh, firstly, there's an M Carbon Exterior Styling Pack, which adds carbon fibre to the front air outlets, either side of the grill, as well as to the door mirrors, uh, the rear spoiler and the rear diffuser. Secondly, and perhaps most controversially, the M Carbon Pack gets you BMW's race style M carbon bucket seats with their exaggerated side bolsters and extra support. They're great for Silverstone, they're not all that good for suburbia though. If you like the idea of these DTM style chairs, we'd strongly suggest you uh, try those before you buy them. If you are going to be using this M4 on track, then you're also likely to want to blow another £8,000 on the M Pro Pack. This gives you M carbon ceramic brakes with gold calipers and the M Drivers Pack, which removes a standard 155 miles an hour speed limiter and increases the top speed to 180. The M Drivers Pack can be ordered separately for just over £2,000 more, which does seem a lot just to change a line of engine software, although the pack does include Z-rated tyres too and a voucher for a BMW M intensive driver training session. The remaining three options packs are the same as you get on any four series model. Uh, the visibility pack for £1,500 more gets you BMW's piercing blue themed laser lights which give a beam range of 600 metres. If you're tempted by that then you probably also want to look at the optional Technology Plus pack which for £1,750 more gets you the full contents of BMW's driving assistant professional camera safety package. We'll cover that for you when we get on to talking about safety of course. Uh, other Otherwise, the Technology Plus package is all about parking. It includes BMW's Park Assistant Plus Remote 3D View Surround View Camera System. Uh, the cameras for this are also employed in another clever feature. This is the brand's drive recorder. This is like a dash cam, except it's a lot more sophisticated. Uh, the drive recorder system uses inbuilt cameras to record video footage from different points around the vehicle before storing the event and crash recordings so they can be either watched later on the control display or exported via the USB port. Uh, recordings can be up to 40 seconds in length for accident playback. You get 20 seconds before the impact and then 20 seconds after it. Uh, Park Assistant Plus with the drive recorder system can also be ordered separately. If luxury is more your focus than technology, then there's a comfort pack, which for £990 more gives you comfort access keyless entry, uh, including a powered boot lid that you can activate with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Uh, additionally, this pack includes steering wheel heating. Uh, now that can also be ordered separately. 
Uh, those then are the major pack options, but if you want everything and you can't be bothered with all the box ticking, uh, then your dealer will direct you towards the ultimate pack, which for a cool £11,250 gives you the carbon pack, the technology plus pack, the visibility pack and the comfort pack, along with BMW's upholstery upgrade. And the brand calls this its full merino leather upholstery pack. We'll also mention that if you've chosen the M4 convertible, you can add in a wind deflector and an anthracite silver fleck finish for the hood. OK, on to aesthetic upgrades. Metallic paint standard. Uh, here we've got Sao Paulo yellow, but inevitably BMW also offers a range of more exclusive extra cost body shades. Uh, you can also spend more money on different wheel designs and you can get the rims shod with cup track tyres. Uh, that's what's been done with this test car. It features these optional 826 series M double spoke bicolour black alloy rims with track tyres. If you're stuck with a standard M compound braking system as a no-cost option, you can have the calipers finished in blue or black if you don't like this standard red finish. As for the interior, well, there are optional carbon fibre trim inlays and there are various upholstery choices. Standard is extended merino leather, but you can also switch to full merino leather. Uh, we have that in this particular car for £1,700 more. If you want to switch away from standard black, you can have the seating finished in ivory white for the same cost, or for a bit more in brighter Fiona red and black. If you don't like any of those options, uh, then with either extended merino leather or with full merino leather, there are bicolour upholstery options. There's a relatively subdued Silverstone and black bicolour package, or for the extroverts, there's either Kyle Army orange and black by colour, or a really quite garish Yas Marina blue and black with yellow accents package. As for practical options, well, we'd want the luggage compartment mat and possibly the all-weather floor mats for the muddier months. Uh, you might also like to add in a tow bar, and that would enable you to add a rear bike carrier. Uh, BMW additionally offers an advanced car eye dash cam. As usual, it would also be wise to include BMW's optional Trackstar stolen vehicle tracking system. OK, enough with standard kit and options. Let's go on to consider safety provision. Now, BMW wants to assure us that this G82 series design is intrinsically very safe, thanks to a comprehensive passive safety concept, uh, which features a super stiff passenger cell and highly resilient supporting structures. It also includes integrated safety electronics, which deploy the restraint systems in the right sequence at the right moment and with the required effect for the type and severity of the collision. Of course, there are the usual twin front and side airbags, uh, plus the driver's knee bag as well. As you expect, there are front and rear Isofix child seat fastenings uh, and also the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, uh, primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's a trailer stabilisation function, which will stop trailer sway if you have a trailer fitted, and a hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC, cornering brake control and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Uh, panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and they're advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get an active bonnet to minimise injuries in the nightmare scenario of a pedestrian collision and a multi-collision braking function too, which in the event of an impact with a solid object or another vehicle will keep uh, brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Tyre pressure monitoring is standard too. Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the attentiveness assistant, which monitors you for signs of drowsiness. Uh, we'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Uh, this system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but it also provides uh, recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. So if you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive 
on the scene, more prepared and more ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. Uh, potentially life-saving difference, really. Uh, the setup's now been further enhanced to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions, which are below the threshold for airbag deployment. Uh, immediately after the impact, it flashes up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. We should also mention that to meet current customer expectations, a full range of camera-driven safety features is included. That was long overdue for this model. Uh, the previous F82 generation version of this car was launched without any kind of autonomous braking system at all and not much else actually in terms of camera safety kit. Uh, this time around, BMW groups its main camera-driven safety features in the Active Guard Plus Intelligent Safety Package, which is familiar from other models. Uh, the key element of this, as you might expect, is autonomous braking, or as the Munich maker calls it, front collision warning with city braking. Uh, this system works as these kinds of setups usually do. At over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards and if one's detected you'll be warned and the brakes will be preconditioned for uh, maximum effectiveness. Uh, if you happen to be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and you're not responding to a detected hazard then the brakes will automatically be applied and that reduces the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviates it altogether. There are two other standard Active Guard Plus features, lane departure warning with steering impulse that alerts you if you cross lane delineating lines, and speed limit information pictures road signs as you pass and displays them on the dash. If you want more in terms of camera-driven safety tech, you're going to have to stump up for the extra cost driving assistant professional pack. Uh, we have that in this car and it has to be had as part of the Technology Plus package that we mentioned earlier on. Uh, that means that this enhanced safety pack isn't cheap. Still, it does include all the choicest parts of BMW safety camera and autonomous driving technology, as you're just about to hear. Uh, the autonomous driving part of the driving assistant professional pack lies primarily with two elements. There's active cruise control with approach control, and that's there to regulate your distance to the vehicle in front, and it's able, if necessary, to slow you right down to a stop and then start you off again. It incorporates a radar-based approach control function, which senses other traffic around you and can adapt the throttle and brakes accordingly. But the real highlight of this optional driving assistant professional pack is BMW's now improved steering and lane control assistant, which takes its bearings from road markings and vehicles driving ahead using data from a trifocal camera and a front range radar. And that enables it to work with the driver to help keep the car centered in the detected lane with corrective steering input. The setup can make corrective steering interventions at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour, although you do have to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. We've found that this works particularly well in heavy traffic, especially now that it's been updated to include the brand's latest active navigation tech. Now this system uh, uses navigation data to spot in advance when a lane change will be required and in preparation the system will automatically adjust the car's speed and that's to make it easier to steer into a suitable gap in the adjacent lane. We mentioned that this driving assistant professional pack also includes a whole suite of BMW's latest camera safety tech. So let's brief you on that. There's active lane guidance, which adds subtle steering lock to ease you back to where you ought to be if the lane departure warning system that we mentioned earlier on detects that you've inadvertently veered over the carriageway delineating lines. In addition, as part of this extra cost pack, you'll also get BMW's lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection package. Now that incorporates side collision warning and lane change warning too, all of which stops you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot and adds in light steering correction, which will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road uh, if you drift offline. 
We also like the PAC's crossing traffic warning front feature, which alerts you to oncoming vehicles if you're trying to edge out of a junction and you can't completely see the traffic coming at you from either side. Uh, there's also automatic speed limit assist, and that works with the traffic sign recognition system to recognise speed limits and prevent you from exceeding them. We haven't finished yet either. The Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes an evasion aid which gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Uh, say for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make uh, a really dramatic lane change to avoid slow moving traffic. Uh, plus there's Crossroads Warning 2 that incorporates give way warning and it alerts you to traffic which is coming at you from the sides at a crossroads. And finally, uh, as the name suggests, wrong way warning will make an enormous fuss if you forget yourself and end up driving the wrong way up a one-way street. It's all very reassuring. You won't be expecting a 510 horsepower motorsport tuned super sports coupe to be inexpensive to run and of course this one isn't. Uh, the best the BMW could do was to make it class competitive or at least class competitive against non-electrified rivals and they have at least done that. Uh, this rear driven model manages 27.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 234 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, WLTP rated figures almost identical to those you'll get from a rival Porsche 911 Carrera Coupe, which surely can't be a coincidence. Uh, the M4 Competition X drive variant fares fractionally better. That's up to 28.2 mpg and 227 grams per kilometre. And for the M4 Competition Convertible X drive, the readings are 27.7 mpg and up to 231 grams per kilometre. These kinds of readings are kept in check by BMW Efficient Dynamics technology, uh, which features things like electromechanical power steering, uh, auto stop start, uh, brake energy regeneration, and on demand control of the engine ancillaries. Uh, but they still might give some browsing buyers cause for concern, particularly if these people happen to compare them to the figures delivered by the car that will offer this G82 series model its stiffest sales competition throughout its production life. Uh, that's a similarly performing Mercedes AMG C63 Coupe which uses a four-cylinder hybrid engine mating combustion power with an electric motor. Even to get anywhere near the figures that we just quoted, you'll have to drive with considerable restraint and um, with the engine in its efficient M menu setting and the centre console M mode button set into its most sensible road format. Uh, you can monitor just how much high octane fuel you're using via a graphical readout provided in the centre screen's journey data section and that's part of a driving information section which also has an energy flow graphic. But of course, as an M4 owner, that's the last thing you'll want to do. Uh, drive this car in anger as it was meant to be driven and the figures that we've just given you will disappear, of course, in a high octane haze. And if you use your right boot in anger a good percentage of the time, then you'll certainly chew through consumables like tyres and brake pads. Plus, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres will be fearsomely expensive to replace. So do bear that in mind before you go experimenting for too long on track days with the M Drift Analyzer. What else? Um, well, in the uh, vehicle status section of the center dash screen, there's a general check control, which allows you to monitor the status of various vehicle functions. Plus, there are separate screens, which allow you to specifically oversee things like tire pressures and also the current level of engine oil. You can check on service requirements too, and you can use a clever teleservices feature, which comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services. Uh, you can access those through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment's due, your M4 can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service center, uh, complete with detailed information on the vehicle's condition. And you'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment and that's something that you will have budgeted for already if at the uh, point of original purchase you opted for one of the two fixed cost uh, service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages and they cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. 
With these, after a one-off payment, uh, you'll have all the peace of mind of knowing that all the normal work on the car has been paid for during that period. And that includes items like oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, based on the Band K CO2 figure, your vehicle excise duty will cost £1,345 for the first year and then £490 a year for the second, third, fourth and fifth years of ownership. So budget for that when you're working out how much you can afford to blow on extras. Uh, residual values, they should be reasonably strong, although they won't uh, quite match those of a rival Audi RS5 coupe. On to the warranty package. Uh, BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it does include an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited. Uh, that's unlike the comparable package that you'd get as standard with a rival Audi. Uh, you can, of course, extend that warranty with either monthly or annual payments. Uh, there's a three-year paintwork warranty, of course, and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. As for insurance, uh, while well, you're looking at Group 42E for both this rear-driven model and for the X-Drive variant, uh, the M4 Competition Convertible, that's rated at Group 46E. There's not actually a lot of commonality between early M3 Coupe models and this modern-day M4 interpretation of the same street racing formula. The focus has changed from a raw, track-tamed screamer to something a lot more measured. Don't get us wrong, the M4 is still hugely thrilling, even if you invoke just 50% of its capability. Its agenda, though, has changed. If you were one of those who had a poster of the E30 M3 on your bedroom wall back in the 80s, then the mature adult in you would probably find that car too wearing now. Instead, you'd want something like this. That's where the M4 is so clever. It's taken its customers with it. Understanding that people are spending this kind of money on a sports coupe don't necessarily want something that'll bite back, give them the shakes, and necessitate a trip to the chiropractors. Are there drawbacks? Well, there's the ongoing debate about the controversial front grille. Uh, we quite like it, you may not. Beyond that, a few moans about the M carbon seats, which you don't have to have anyway. There's really not much to fault, providing you can afford uh, both the premium asking price and the running costs, which will be considerably higher than those of this car's closest Mercedes-AMG C63 rival. Some have tried to suggest that the switch of auto transmission from DCT dual clutch to torque converter ZF has made cog swapping a touch less sharp and that the orchestral accompaniment from the S58 series version of this car's three litre straight six isn't quite as memorable as before. Uh, we don't have any issues with either of those two things and we don't think that you will either, but we can't help wondering just how good this G82 Series M4 might be without the extra 170 kilos of weight it's gained this time around. Perhaps a future track style variant of this car might show us, or of course there's always the BMW M2. Many will feel, as we do, that any issues here, such as they are, will be a small price to pay for the much bigger benefits offered elsewhere with this second generation M4 design. This still remains the most exciting and involving car of its kind, but crucially, that capability is so much more accessible now, particularly if, as most customers will, you choose this car in X-Drive form. The extra track features, uh, the things like the M Drift Analyzer and the 10-stage M Traction Control System, they probably look like fun inclusions during development of this model, but in the real world, owners will hardly ever have the opportunity to use them, and many, quite frankly, wouldn't have the driving skill to fully engage with them, even if they did. Which makes it all the more important that you no longer need the Nordschleifer to properly enjoy what this car can do. On the right day, in the right mood, on the right path of your favourite back road, there'll be times in this M4 when you'll wonder whether any sensible sports car at any price could be more exciting than this one. As we said when we were testing the G80 Series M3, what's been delivered here is perhaps the ultimate combination of M5 maturity and M2 agility, which leaves us with... Well, quite simply this, the most complete M4 ever made.